can't. Uh, ooh. Babies love that really annoying plastic noise. Perfect for a baby. It shouldn't be as hard as it's been. Why is it being so hard? It's okay, I said. The lighting's been. Okay, fine, I'll do it again. Hi crafty people! Today I'm here to share with you my sewing project for a new baby. This makes a perfect baby shower gift or a gift for a newborn and it's a great beginner friendly easy sewing project. I think you're going to enjoy making this toy with me. My name's Marie and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. You might be wondering why I've got all these cereal boxes here around me. Well, follow me and I'll show you. We are going to be making some crinkle taggy toys just like this. I have here some that I have made for my kids that they really enjoyed and we'll be making two more today. This is the perfect toy for a baby because they have high contrast on one side and a nice texture on the other. Babies love playing with these little tags and chewing on it and the sensory stimulation with the noise they always really enjoy too. Where do the cereal boxes come into play? Well, they are what is making the noise inside of these two here. This taggy toy that I've made is actually one similar to ones that I've sold before and I've bought a special type of baby safe plastic to put on the inside, which is like this. You can buy this online, I'll put the link down below if you would like to buy this, but if you would like to have a easy, free way to get that crinkle noise from things you were just going to throw away anyway, then I use the plastic inserts from cereal boxes. This is what I use on the ones that I made originally before I started making them to sell, and they're just as good and they've held up for the past two or three years of being used. They still sound nice and crinkly, they're still safe for baby to use, and they are machine washable. I'm going to be showing you step by step how I make these tangy toys and I'll be using this plastic that I've bought in mine but if you're using the plastic from the cereal boxes this is what you need to do. First you need to take the plastic out and cut out a square the size that you would like your tangy toy to be and then just wash that piece of plastic in your sink with some warm soapy water and leave it to dry. Once it's dry it's all ready to go to be sewn inside and you can use that in the same way as I'm going to be using the plastic in mine. I think the ones that will have the cereal box liner and the ones that have the bought plastic do sound very different but they're both equally effective in providing that sensory stimulation for a baby. If you enjoy learning new ideas of how you can reuse things instead of just throwing them away, give me a thumbs up below. So we're ready to start making our taggy toys. Let's get making. My mum makes taggy toys. You need fabric for the front and back, about 10 different ribbons, and then some polar fleece and crinkly plastic for the middle. My front fabric is cut as a 21 centimetre square, which is around about eight inches. And then each of my ribbons is 10 centimetres long. I'm folding these 10 centimetre long ribbons in half and then pinning the open edge against the edge of my fabric. I try not to pin my ribbons too close to the corners and evenly spread them out around the perimeter of my taggy toy. I make sure that if it's a wider ribbon, I use two pins so that it's held securely in place. Set your sewing machine to a zigzag stitch to stitch all of these ribbons on. I have set mine to a small zigzag stitch, so the width is 3.5 and the length is 2.0 on my machine. And I'm sewing back and forwards over each of my tags to hold them securely in place. This way, they've been sewn over three times forwards, backwards, and then forwards again on my way to the next tag. Don't remove your pins as you're sewing the tags on. We're going to leave them on to keep them secure as we do the next step. Place your front and back fabrics right sides together. You'll notice I've cut my back fabric a little larger. That is intentional. Then I'm putting my crinkle plastic on top and I have a piece of polar fleece underneath it all, which will be in the middle to make it nice and soft. I'm going to pin these layers together, ready to sew around the outside. Sew around all four sides using a straight stitch, leaving a little gap so that you're able to turn it in the right way. I have the presser foot lined up with the edge of the front of my taggy toy, and I'm putting the needle down when I need to turn a corner. My machine has no issues sewing through the plastic, but if you are having issues, maybe your needle is a bit blunt, you might just need to change it and put a new one in. To avoid needing to hand sew up a corner, I make sure to leave my gap in the middle of one of the sides. 
And as I'm going around it, I'm reaching inside to take out the pins that are holding the tags down. I do like to leave them in to make sure the tags stay flat as I'm sewing this border, but I like to take them out before I have to turn it inside out and get my hand all pricked. Cut around your taggy toy to remove all the excess. The reason I cut it larger to begin with is in case one of the layers slips and it's just a lot easier to make sure everything's lined up if those extra layers are a little larger. Turn your taggy toy in the right way by pushing it through the hole that you have left and use a pencil if needed to push the corners out so that they sit flat. I'm going to use a ladder stitch to hand sew this hole closed. If you'd like more details on how to do a ladder stitch, you can watch my hand sewing technique video. I'll link that in the description box down below. Essentially, I'm just doing a little stitch on one side and lining up where the needle comes out with where I start the stitch on the other side of the fabric. So that as I sew, you can't see where the stitches are joining each of the sides of the fabric together. Our last step is to sew a decorative top stitch around the outside of the taggy toy to hold it flat and to make it look a bit more finished. We're going to start going around the sides of our fabric with a straight stitch with the presser foot against the side of my fabric again. I've chosen to use a contrasting cotton because I think it looks nice to be a bit more bold in this situation, but you can choose whatever you think would look nice on your taggy toy. So there you have it. We've finished making our taggy toys. I'll insert a few pictures here of my kids playing with them when they're a bit younger. These have been a perfect toy for our kids when they're just learning to grasp. They love the high contrast, the different textures, the little tags to chew on, and the sound that these make. I really hope that you enjoy making one of these too. And if you do make it, I'd love to see a photo. Tag me on Instagram at mymummakes.marie. Please like this video below and subscribe so that next week you'll get notified of the video that I'm making. I'm going to be showing you how I elasticate some of Elijah's pants and take out the drawstring so that he's able to get dressed by himself without needing help to tie a drawstring up. I'd love for you to come back and watch me as I do that mending project. And until then, get creative and I'll see you later.